gang, this video is about natural selection. But first, I want you to think back to our farmer fly story and just recap, how did the population of flies change? So why don't you uh, pause the video, think about it, jot down your answer, and then unpause when you're ready to discuss. So looking at the images, uh, you should remember that the farmer had an issue with uh, the, the flies and he tried to use insecticide, uh, but then uh, they survived repeated exposures to insecticide. So the beginning population were uh, vulnerable to insecticide, but then the, the end population, the final population, were resistant to the insecticide. So let's recap how that happened. So you see here there are some mutant flies that are resistant, that are born resistant to the insecticide. And then most of the flies are actually normal non-resistant flies. So let's keep track of the percentage of uh, mutant resistant flies. And we see here it's roughly 33%. So what happened, we uh, exposed them to insecticide. Uh, some of the flies die out, especially the least resistant or normal flies die out. Uh, we may have some that survive after our first spraying event. And then we say that the, the, the flies reproduce and they pass down their trait. So the uh, resistant flies will have resistant offspring. Normal flies will have normal offspring. And, uh, and then we can uh, expose the, the flies to insecticide again and on and on and on. And then we see at our final population, uh, keeping track of the resistant flies, that they are about 67% resistant. So you can see from the initial population, 33% resistant to 67% resistant, we see a change in the population. And that, in a nutshell, is actually evolution when a population changes. The composition of the population has changed. Now this is actually an example of something we call natural selection. So evolution is just uh, specifying that there's a change in the population, but the mechanism, how it changed, is one mechanism is called natural selection. And for our purposes, the definition of natural selection is, uh, of course, a mechanism of evolution in which organisms that are adapted to the environment, they survive and reproduce. And of course, that means those that are, are less adapted or least adapted to the environment do not survive and do not reproduce. And when we think about the components of natural selection, let's go back to the fly example. So um, before I tell you, why don't, I want you to think about what were the requirements for this process of evolution to occur in the flies. So why don't you pause the video, think about it, jot down some things. What things had to happen in order for this fly population to evolve, to become more resistant. So jot down a few ideas, um, pause, unpause uh, when you're ready to proceed. So we think about this uh, fly population. The first thing that had to be true is that there had to be variation. There had to be difference in the fly population. So there, there were some mutants and there were some normal. If they were all clones of each other, this process completely breaks down, right? So either they'll all survive or they'll all die. Um, and that wouldn't allow this process of change to occur. And, it, and when you think about this variation, this sort of genetic variation, uh, what's the source of this? Where does variation come from? What's the source of this variation? Pause, unpause when you're ready to discuss. And of course, you probably deduce that the original source of these of this mutate of these variation is mutation. So mutation is the underlying cause of all variation in a population. And let's think what else had to be true. Well, not only did there have to be variation differences in the population, these differences had to be uh, inherited. They had to be genetically determined. They had to be passed down to offspring. So of course, if these mutant flies didn't produce mutant offspring, then this, again, this process breaks down. Now, when you think about uh, another thing that has to be true for natural selection to occur is that there has to be some environmental stress or what we call selection pressure. So you think about the term selection pressure, selection meaning that some are uh, surviving, that something is happening in the environment, and pressure is meaning that that, that not all of the organisms can survive, that some organisms are dying. 
So selection pressure is some condition in the environment that's selectively killing or causing the death of some organisms and not others. Hence the term selection, hence the term pressure. So in this uh, scenario, what's the selection pressure? What's the thing that's actively killing or selectively killing some organisms? Pause, unpause when you're ready to discuss. And you probably deduce that the selection pressure here are, is the insecticide, right? The insecticide are killing the non-resistant flies, leaving the resistant flies alive. So now when we think about selection pressure, I, w I just want to talk a little bit about this. So we've defined selection pressure as sort of this environmental condition or environmental stress, just killing some or organisms. That could be true. Or the other thing that could be true, maybe there isn't a selection pressure, but maybe it's just this sort of concept of what we call overproduction. Overproduction just means that more organisms are produced than can possibly survive in a particular environment. And if that's, if that's the case, if there are just too many organisms born, not all can survive, then that's going to lead to competition. So maybe competition is the thing that's sort of causing some organisms to live and die. So it may not be sort of just a selection pressure. It just might be competition um, and over that's sort of caused by overproduction. So this third factor, you can either say a selection pressure is needed or overproduction, which leads to competition. So basically, not, something has to uh, ca cause harm to some organisms as opposed to others. That's the third factor that's needed. Um, so, if you, uh, so again, if there wasn't an insecticide, again, this scenario with the flies does not happen, right? Fourth condition. Well, there's something called differential survival and reproduction. And if you think about differential, it just means different, at different rates. So that means that some flies are surviving and reproducing at different rates than others. And you think about in this scenario, well, of course, which organisms are surviving at a higher rate and reproducing at a higher rate? Well, of course, it's the resistant flies, right? And, and the other flies, the normal flies, are reprodu surviving and reproducing at a lower rate. And if that didn't happen, if they were reproducing at an equal rate, then, again, this process breaks down. And then the last step or the last requirement of natural selection is what we call adaptation. And you have to be careful here. When I'm saying adaptation, I mean, what I'm meaning is that, that there is this trait, this trait that allows organisms to survive and reproduce at a high rate. And I'm talking about the population itself has the adaptation or the population is adapting to the environment. Um, and this is an important distinction because individuals, and this might sound counterintuitive, but individuals do not adapt to the environment. The species as a whole or the population as a whole adapts to the environment. So let's go back to this fly example. So the adaptation that exists in this population is resistance. These flies, the, the bulk of the flies are now resistant. They have adapted to the environment. But the particular flies don't adapt to the environment. You know, if you think about a fly that's born... Uh, normal is not all of a sudden during this lifetime going to become resistant. It's not going to change its DNA to become resistant to the insecticide, right? It either the, the individuals are either living or dying. Either you you ha by chance happen to be born with the right trait, and you survive and reproduce at higher rates than others, or by or just you just have the bad luck of of um, being born with a trait that's not helpful. And, and you die, and you're not, and you're unable to reproduce. It might take you some, uh, some t take a while to internalize this this last characteristic, but it's important to know that the population itself has adapted, not the individuals. The individuals did not change their traits, all right?